let's add custom blocks to Minecraft. Alright, we found ourselves back in the once more, and in this tutorial we're going to be adding a custom block to Fabric 119.3, so this is going to be very interesting indeed. So for this, in the tutorial mod package, we're going to right-click new package called block, and inside of there we're going to need a new Java class called the mod blocks class. Now in here, we will actually need a few helper methods to, well, get all of this sorted. So first of all, let's add a public static void register mod blocks method which is going to once again do tutorialmod.logger.info and this is going to be registering mod blocks for tutorialmod.modid mod right here. So we're going to call this immediately inside of our oninitialized method. So mod blocks dot register blocks and there you go. So let's go back and now we can add some helper methods. The first helper method that we're going to add is the register block item method a private static item and this is called the register block item method now this will take in a string name a block block and also an item group called tab or group that's fine either way that's going to be okay if one of your classes here is red you can just click on it and press alt and enter and then make sure to import net minecraft block right here and then you should be fine now the register block item is actually quite interesting indeed because this is going to look like this. We're actually going to make an item inside of that method. This is going to be registry. Once again, making sure we choose net Minecraft registry right here. Just tap to autocomplete dot register. This is registries dot item comma a new identifier tutorial mod dot mod ID comma name. And then after the first parentheses comma, we're just going to make a new line here. And then we're going to pass in a new block item because this is an item that is specifically has a reference to a block. So tap to autocomplete, passing in the block parameter here, and then also passing in new fabric item settings. Close parentheses, close parentheses, and then a semicolon. Then in the second line of the method, we want to call once again the item group events dot modify entries event, passing it right here in the group dot register, and then just doing entries. Once again, this is the arrow over here, and then just saying entries.add, and then adding the item that we have made right here. This is very important, otherwise your block is actually not going to be added to the proper item group. Now, this in this case, your item right, is going to be registered and is only ever going to be added to one particular item group. If you want this to be added to another item group, you would then have to take the item that the register block item method returns right here, and actually, so it returns it right here, and then register it to another one. So this is basically for adding a block to one item group and not multiple. Just keep that in mind. You can also do some other things. So for example, you can make it so that you can add multiple item groups right here. We're not going to do any of that right now. If there's anything else that you want to do, some Java knowledge might help you to figure out another way of doing it, but this is actually going to be a proper good way to do it for the time being. And then we need a private static block right here. And that is the register block method. This once again requires a string name, a block block, and an item group or group. And this looks like the following. This is going to register the block item, passing in the name, passing in the block, and passing in the group. And then it's going to return registry.register with registries.block, comma, a new identifier, tutorial mod.mod ID, comma, name, and then after the first parentheses comma block there you go and that is all of that now of course as always all of the code is available to you in the description below in a github repository so no worries at all and now we're finally going to add a block so we're going to make a public static final block right here we're going to call it the citrine underscore block this is going to be equal to the register block method and then passing in a name once again this name thing right here this is a label that at that generates automatically. You don't have to type this out. You only have to type in the quotation marks. And then inside of there, we're going to make this the citrine underscore block. And then this is going to be a new block right here. So there's going to be a new block. And then we're going to say fabric block settings dot of material dot. Let's say this is going to be a metal. After the first parentheses, we can now add a bunch of different things to this particular block. You can see we can say it drops nothing there might be some hardness luminance associated with it no collisions non-opaque so there's a bunch of stuff that we can do i want to add the strength right here this is basically how long this takes to break and how resistant it is to explosions 
is going to be 0.4F. Very important. This is a float that we have to pass in. And then also requires tool. And then after the second closing parentheses, we are going to have to put in the mod item group dot citrine so that it also knows to put it into this particular item group. And in this case, that is our citrine block added. Absolutely amazing. Now, very important note, when this has been added, you will not be able to mine this and it will not drop itself. This is something we're going to take a look at in the next tutorial. Please keep that in mind. But before we even talk about this, we first of all have to add all of the JSON files. And for the blocks, the JSON files are a little bit more complicated because we're going to need a block states JSON file, a block model JSON file, and an item model JSON file. So we're going to start in the block states JSON file. We're going to make a right-click new file. And this is going to be called the citrine underscore block JSON. Once again, of course, the name of the file has to match exactly this name and then JSON extremely important. So once again, I will type this out and then I will explain it. So we're going to have a variance, extremely important that this is written correctly. And then quotation marks that are going to be empty, colon, curly brackets, model, colon, tutorial mod, colon, block slash citrine underscore block. All right, so what the frick is this? Well, first of all, variance, extremely important that this is written correctly. Once again, lowercase v, uh, double a's, right? This is, has to be written correctly. Then empty quotation marks right here, not with a space or anything, just empty. We then got colon, open, curly bracket, and then model, very important that this is also written correctly. And then tutorial mod or your mod ID, colon block slash citrine block. Now, what does this do? Well, this looks in the tutorial mod assets folder right again, right? So assets, tutorial mod, and it's going to look inside of the models folder, right? So right here, inside of the block folder, and it's going to look for a citrine underscore block dot JSON file. This is going to look for the block model JSON file. So that's what we're going to add next in the models block folder. Right click new file called citrine underscore block dot JSON. Once again, making sure that we write this correctly. And this is going to look like the following. It's going to once again be have a parent. This is going to be block slash cube underscore all comma textures colon open quote open curly brackets all and this is tutorial mod colon block slash citrine underscore block hey so what the frig is going on here well if we actually look at this this is very similar to our item model json files that we've seen you can see it is almost exactly the same but it has a different parent and it has a different thing that's written here but overall it is a very similar structure and that is absolutely correct so the parent here once again just determines how this particular block is displayed, right? What textures are on all six sides? In our case, it's going to be a cube with all sides having the same texture. And that texture is going to be in the tutorial mod assets folder. So once again, assets, tutorial mod, textures, textures under the block folder. And it's going to look for a citrine underscore block that PNG. Let's add this PNG as well. And then there you go. Now our block is going to display properly inside of the world. However, it's not going to display properly inside of the inventory because we also need an item model JSON file. This is extremely important. A block needs three JSON files, a block state JSON file, a block model JSON file, and an item model JSON file. So in the models item folder, we're going to right click new file called citrine underscore block that JSON. And an item model JSON file for a block is actually very, very straightforward. It has a parent. That parent is just tutorial mod colon block slash citrine underscore block. So basically, this refers just back to the this particular block model. And that's all that there is to it. So it's going to display like this 3D way that it that a normal block basically displays inside of the inventory uh, with this particular texture. Of course, let's not forget to add the translation over here. Let's just duplicate this. Now, the translation is going to be instead of item, it's going to be block dot tutorial mod or your mod ID. And then, of course, once again, citrine underscore block. So this is just going to be the name that you have given in the mod blocks class right here once again. And then there you go. And then you can name it whatever. So for example, block block of citrine or citrine block, either one works, whatever you might want to call this particular block. Right next, actually all of the steps that we need to take in order for us to add a block. Once again, it will not be mineable with anything. You can't mine it yet. That is going to be done in the next. But for the time being, let's go into the game and actually see if it works. All right, so we're in game and let's just see. There we go. The block of citrine has been successfully added. And as you can see, it has a texture both inside of the inventory as well as the world. For some troubleshooting, if the citrine block does not have a texture inside of the inventory, it is going to be your item model file that you have to take a look at. If it does not have a texture inside of the world, but it does have a texture inside of the inventory, it is going to be your block states JSON file that has an issue. And if both of them don't work, then it can make any of the JSON files. And once again, just so that this is absolutely clear, 
Right now, if I were to mine this, you can see it takes forever to mine this with a diamond pickaxe because we have not told the game with what this is mineable. So please make sure this is done in the next tutorial. But for the time being, this all works. Right, just so that you have seen it, we're going to add two other blocks as well. That is going to be the citrine ore and the citrine deep slate ore. So this is going to be the citrine ore right here. Let's just change this name as well. So I once again just duplicated this by pressing Control D. Now this is actually going to be a different type of block. This is going to be an experience dropping block because a, an ore block usually drops experience. So you can see we actually don't necessarily have to change anything. If we middle mouse button click on this, we can actually see this would mean that it's going to drop no experience, which of course is kind of stupid. That's not quite why we want an experience dropping block. We want a block that actually drops experience. So after the requires tool, we can add a comma and then a new line. And we can then say uniform int provider dot create. And here we can define how much experience this particular block will drop. So let's say between three and seven, something like that. If you want to know the vanilla experience drops, you can just middle mouse button click on this and then middle mouse button click on this to actually see everywhere where this particular class has been used. And you can see it's the coal or deep slate coal or so on and so forth. So for example, let's say we're like, I, you know, I want this to be roughly like lapis. So let's just click on this and you can see we're in the blocks class now where all of the vanilla blocks are being registered. And in line 362, we can just go to the right and we can see uniform in provider two and five. Okay, so Lapis, when you mine it, it has a chance of dropping between two and five. Ex right, we have three to seven. That's totally fine. Maybe we're like, ah, maybe, you know what? Maybe between two and six is going to be fine. And then there you go. And then let's just duplicate this one more time and make slate underscore citrine ore as well. Make sure to change the name here as well. Deep slate underscore citrine ore. And that should be fine. Now, this probably shouldn't be metal. This should probably be stone because, you know, both the ores are more stone based instead of metal based. Uh, this is basically just for sounds and things like that so that it, everything is correctly set up. Now, yes, for the two new blocks, we are actually going to need a block state JSON file for each of them, a block model JSON file for both of them, and a item model JSON file for both of them, as well as a texture. Now, I have already prepared this, so I'm just going to copy all of those over. Those are also available to you in the description below in a GitHub repository, so no worries at all. Let's just copy over the last two. But you, what you will find is that they are, look at this, right? So they look exactly the same. The only thing that has changed is what they refer to inside of the actual JSON file. So overall, this shouldn't be too crazy for you to do as well. You're gonna get better at this as well, the more you do it, and this is going to be fine. And then also at some point, we're going to see how you can let those files generate themselves so you don't even have to copy them over. That's going to save you a bunch of time as well. But for the time being, we're just going to copy those over and we're going to be okay with that. Let's not forget to add the textures here as well and also the translation. This is just going to be citrine ore. Call this ore. There you go. And then this is deep slate citrine ore. There you go. And then this is going to be slate ore. Wonderful. And that is all that we need. So once again, let's just go into the game one more time and see if it works. All right, so once again, citrine ore and citrine. Oh, look at this. Deep Slate Citrine Ore actually has a typo in there somewhere. You can see it is not localized properly, but that is no worries at all. We can, of course, fix that. So this is, of course, what would show up if you haven't probably... There's a typo somewhere, but that's no worries. And once again, I, I can't mention this enough. You still can mine those. This is going to be done in the next... Regardless of that, though... All of the blocks have been successfully added to Minecraft. And indeed, I wrote deep salt citrine ore, and it, of course, has to be deep late citrine ore. There you go, and that's going to be totally fine. And that's it for this tutorial right here. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. So, yeah.